Hello, and welcome to this brief overview of the Marinette High School Co-Curricular Code of Conduct. While viewing this presentation, it may be beneficial to have with you a copy of the Co-Curricular Code of Conduct Handbook. All of us, whether we are a student, coach, advisor, staff member, or parent, play a major role in shaping the culture of Marinette High School. We have four core values that we call the Marine Way. They are respect, integrity, responsibility, and excellence. They are taught within our teams and groups, and they also serve as a framework for programs at Marinette High School, including this co-curricular code of conduct. As a co-curricular code of conduct, this code applies to all student activities that are listed on the front cover of the handbook. The code is broken down into three levels of infractions. First, rules, then misdemeanors, and lastly and most severe, violations. A complete list of Code of Conduct rules can be found on page 3 of the handbook. The four most prominent rules are listed here. First is school attendance. Students must be in attendance for a full day in order to participate in co-curricular activities, unless they have one of the approved absences that are listed here. Listed second is academic eligibility. A student is academically ineligible if they have more than one failing grade at the end of the school quarter. Students may regain eligibility by having no more than one failing grade, a minimum of five days after the end of the quarter. Cell phone privacy. Cell phone use is prohibited in any school locker room, and if found, a coach or advisor has the right to confiscate any phone. Inappropriate use may result in immediate removal from the student activity. Transportation. Students must ride to and from events on the school bus. However, students may ride home with their parents if they complete the alternate transportation form signed by their parents and the athletic director prior to the day of the event. These forms can be found in the Marinette High School main office. The next level of infraction of this co-curricular code of conduct are called misdemeanors. Listed on this page are examples of misdemeanors. When these behaviors occur, the high school principal or athletic director, in conjunction with the coach or advisor, will impose consequences as deemed appropriate. These consequences may include suspension from practices or games. The most severe infractions of our co-curricular code of conduct are called violations. Each of the behaviors listed here are considered violations of the code. Listed first is criminal behavior, which is the arrest or formal charges in a court of law. Listed second are chemical health violations, which are possession, use, buying, selling, and or being under the influence of any drugs or having drug paraphernalia. Drugs are defined as tobacco, electronic or vapor cigarettes, alcohol, performance enhancing drugs, medications without prescriptions, or any other illegal drug. Listed third is presence in a bar or tavern without a parent or guardian present. Listed fourth is presence at a party where alcohol or drugs are being illegally consumed. If in this situation, the student must leave as soon as they become aware of the presence of drugs or alcohol. To remain at the party or gathering shall constitute a code of conduct violation. We encourage students to take it a step further and be a leader and act with integrity. Encourage as many classmates as possible to leave with you. Lastly, with the ease with which technology today is used, it is important to note that any image or video of a student violating the code, code of conduct implicates a code violation. Co-curricular participants are role models in the school, and it only takes one click or one action to suffer unwanted consequences. Now moving on to consequences for code of conduct violations. Beginning with the 2017-2018 school year, student activities are divided into three groups. Group 1 are all WIAA sports and cheer and dance teams. Group 2 activities are all clubs and non-WIAA competitive student groups. Group 3 activities are National Honor Society, Student Senate, and Class Office. Consequences for each group are listed in the table here. It is also important to note the two bullets on the right-hand side of the screen. Students involved in activities in multiple groups will serve the full consequence for each activity of each group they are involved in. And, 
Students involved in multiple activities within the same group will serve the full consequence for each activity within that group for which they are involved. To make this a little bit more clear, let's take a hypothetical scenario. Suppose that we have a student that is involved in cross country, which is a group one activity, who is also involved in the fishing club and shadow club, which are group two activities. And let's suppose that student is also involved in student senate, a group three activity. And if this student unfortunately violates the code of conduct for the first time, their consequences would be as follows. For cross country, again, being a group one activity, the student would miss 30% of their meets for the season. For the fishing club and shadow club, both group two activities, the student must complete 10 service hours to be reinstated in the fishing club and an additional 10 service hours to be reinstated in the shadow club. And lastly, pertaining to student senate, which is a group three activity, the student would be removed from student senate for the remainder of the school year in accordance with, stu with student senate's constitution. This co-curricular code of conduct is meant to be redemptive and restorative. If a student violates the co-curricular code of conduct, they may self-report the violation to the activities director by 10 a.m. the next school day to earn a reduction in consequence. Notice that students are only eligible to do so on their first violation. With the intent of being redemptive and restorative, the steps for reinstatement after a code violation are listed on page 8 of the handbook. The activities director will communicate this with the student and parents when there is a code violation, along with all necessary consequences. Notice the two bullets at the bottom. If a student violates the code of conduct due to an alcohol or drug-related incident, they may be required to receive an AODA assessment, and they will be required to receive an AODA assessment if it is their second alcohol or drug violation. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation as well as your commitment to Marinette High School and all of our co-curricular activities. Please make sure that you or your son or daughter have all necessary forms complete prior to the start of their season. They are all available at the Marinette High School main office.